Welcome eNews audience and thanks for tuning in. My name is Daniel Center and I am the conservation project manager for the Methow Conservancy. I am sitting here today with outgoing Methow Conservancy Executive Director Jason Paulson uh, for a short retrospective conversation on his tenure at the head of this organization. As many of you know, Jason has led this organization for close to 16 years. Before that, he was the city manager of Black Diamond, a small town in King County where he worked closely on conservation projects with the highly accomplished land trust in Seattle, Forterra. Jason inherited the Methow Conservancy when it was roughly 10 years old and was able to build off the early success of former ED, Catherine Bill, to help create the dynamic and successful organization that we know now. To date, the Conservancy has accomplished 116 conservation easements, has well over 1,000 active members, and has an educational reach that spans the entire Pacific Northwest. Jason is leaving the Medhow Conservancy in a strong position to take on the next 15 years in conservation. So Jason, welcome, and thank you for taking some time to talk with me. Great, thanks, Daniel. I'm happy to be here. Great. Uh, before we get to some of the more predictable questions, I think our audience is really dying to know, uh, what is your favorite Little Dipper cookie? Well, yeah, folks have been paying attention, have noticed me making the migration from our new office here on Riverside Avenue to uh, the Little Dipper. Um, if folks haven't been there, I highly recommend the salted walnut chocolate chip cookie. And if you can catch it about five minutes out of the oven, it is definitely uh, one of those treats that uh, puts a smile on your face. So I'd say that's my, my current favorite here in Winthrop. <laughs> I think mine is the Nutella chunk cookie that they have. Yep, no, that's a good one too. Yeah, so glad we got that settled. Um, but you came here to the Medhow Conservancy, I think in 2006. And I was wondering if you have some good memories from those early days that you could share. Oh boy, there's, yeah, there's so many memories because honestly, it feels a little bit like it was just yesterday. It's scary how fast 16 years can, uh, can pass by. Um, I think probably one of the most memorable early memories I have was the opportunity I had, and I think it was just my first or second week uh, here in the Methow to be taken on a driving tour of the valley by Carl and Roxy Miller. Uh, they had, a, a, as I recall, it was a red pickup truck and we all slid across the, the bench seat in front and Carl and Roxy proceeded to drive me up and down what felt like every road in the entire valley. And I, I know that's not true, but it felt like it that day. And at every turn, Carl would point at something and explain how his family once lived on this homestead or that homestead. <laughs> Um, through his years growing up here in the valley. And it's a day I'll never forget because it exposed me to corners of the valley that I hadn't seen um, at that point, and some I haven't even been back to since. And, uh, but it also introduced me to, to Carl and Roxy first and foremost, but to their love for the valley, their knowledge of its natural history and its human history and just their commitment to being involved and, and making it a place they wanted to live. And so it was an incredible introduction to me, not just to the landscape, but to what it means to live and, and contribute long-term here in the Methow. Yeah. Um, another early memory um, was, I think it was my third day on the job. Uh, the Conservancy sent me to Tennessee to attend the National Land Trust Conference and, and I was sent with um, Don Woodruff and John Sunderland and Steve Bondi. And for some reason, John Sunderland and I weren't registered for anything that first day. And John said, hey, I've got an idea. Let's go for a walk and I can just download and share some information with you. And, and that began what ended up being over nine hours of nonstop walking all around uh, Nashville, Tennessee, with John just downloading every story, every relationship, every everything he could think that a new executive director might need to know <laughs> uh, coming in into the organization. And uh, I'm sure I didn't remember all of it, 
but it's amazing how years later uh, things would come along in concert in conversations or different places in the valley and I'd reflect back and think oh I think John told me something about that like I know there's a history here so it was a really fun way to get to know John someone who I have a ton of respect for and just to get introduced to the Met How um, in that way and it's it's a day I, I won't ever forget. Yeah, there's a lot to know about this small valley. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So those are some of the good times. Uh, but I'm also interested in hearing uh, about a memorable crisis that you encountered and uh, how you maybe uh, helped get it resolved. Oh, boy. Well, when I think crisis, the two things that come first and foremost to mind are the time Ashley Lodato roped me into a reader's theater at the Merck. <laughs> and... Uh, and then probably the time uh, she had a role in roping me into Dancing with the Stars here in the Winthrop Barn. Um, both of those crises were managed by just saying yes and going forward and being game and, uh, and making a fool of myself in front of the community. And, and I'm grateful for those memories. But I know you're, you're thinking serious crisis. And I think probably the Carlton complex fires of 2014 are the closest thing that I can reflect upon as being involved in that felt like a crisis. And that as it played out uh, that evening, uh, you know, Wednesday night into that Thursday morning, um, I think none of us quite knew what we were waking up to and, you know, information wasn't flowing and, and we didn't have electricity and there were just so many things you know, thankfully, many of us still had our homes, but but many folks in our community didn't. And and figuring out just what we do next and and how to come together and how a community thinks about the future after that um, was probably one of the most memorable events that I've had the opportunity to be involved in, and to just see the new capacity. Um, and the relationships that were created, you know, between the upper and lower valley, the, the mm -hmm. folks down in Pateros, Carlene Anders and others with uh, Okanagan County long-term recovery, as it's known today, and then our work up here in the Methow with Methow Valley long-term recovery. Um, it brought our communities, our watershed together. I think just the, our whole, um, the landscape together in a lot of ways where fire became this common denominator that we were, we were figuring out how to recover from. So that's probably the most notable um, crisis. And, and I'd say, I think this is almost always true that there's opportunity and silver linings in any crisis. And that's one of the things I've appreciated about having the opportunity to work here is to be a part of an organization that has the capacity and is nimble and can, can identify those opportunities when a crisis does strike and then contribute in a meaningful way. So not all crises are bad. They can be fun, kind of like uh, being in the Reader's Theater at the Merck. <laughs> Interesting comparison, uh, but as someone who came to the Valley after the Carlton Complex, um, every time I hear about it, people talk about it just like you as just such a formative uh, experience and one that really unified this valley as a community. Um, yeah, so switching gears just a little bit, uh, I want to talk about conservation. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the Conservancy has done 116 conservation easements, uh, as well as a few other conservation projects. Um, and I was just curious, um, which of these projects are you most proud of? And if you could tell us a little bit about why, that'd be great. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And um, I think my favorite conservation project is always the next one. And I think that's just what, what comes from uh, spending so many years trying to work on projects like this. You're just always looking forward to, okay, what can we do next? What can we get accomplished now? Um, and it's really hard to pick. Uh, any one project because every project that we work on here at the Conservancy and that I've been a part of, they're so unique. You know, you're dealing with very unique landowners or in some cases families who have uh, multiple members who are all um, trying to get to the same place, which is 
certainty about the future for a piece of land that's important to them in some way. And so it, it's hard to identify like a specific project, but I would say just that opportunity to sit at kitchen tables or, or picnic tables up and down the valley and hear people articulate what it is they dream about for their property for future generations and then to to bring a tool to the table that that helps them achieve that and then to work through that process which in some cases can take many years i i think there are projects i've been fortunate enough to work on that have spanned 10 12 years from beginning to end uh, so you really get to know um people well and um and it's exciting to be able to share in their excitement to finally get across the finish line as I, um, as I think about other projects at large, I would say that the Methow Headwaters um, uh, Protection Act and, and the Headwaters campaign that led to that federal legislation, that's definitely something that I'll always uh, be super proud of being a part of, just getting to work with a collaboration of folks and really diverse folks who all could unify around a belief that the upper Methow is not a good place for uh, for industrial scale mining to take place and, and to rally together and find a tool in our federal system that could address it and then, and then get that done and, and signed by the president. That was pretty exciting. And then the current work that we have underway right now at Methow Conservancy with the former Wagner Ranch uh, with the goal of gifting that property to the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation to honor the Methow people here. Uh, that's something we, we hope to have complete very soon. And it's been an incredible honor just to be a part of that project and get to know Methow descendants and to, to work together to help um, get that across the finish line and hopefully open up a whole new future for, for Methow descendants and others here in the Valley. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing um, that diversity of projects that you've been a part of. Um, I really liked the way you talked about uh, doing conservation easement deals, because that's a perspective that you can only have as somebody who's had a number of years uh, seeing those through. Switching gears a little bit, uh, you have been known for being a little bit of a jokester. Uh, what's one of the pranks uh, that you have pulled off that you can share with us? All right, so for, first and foremost, Yes, um, I do believe in having fun and uh, you know, it's important to have fun at work and everywhere in life. So guilty is charged. Um, <laughs> I, also, I also think sometimes it's, uh, it's hard to retell a prank and make it as fun as being involved in the prank, even if you're the one being pranked at the time. But we have had a history of, of some good fun here at the Methow Conservancy, especially around April 1st, which uh, I will note is tomorrow because we're recording this <laughs> at the end of the month. Um, but, you know, as I think about good pranks, I can't help but think of one that I remember playing on you. And I think it was very early in your tenure at the Conservancy, like first week or two, probably. And I, uh, as I recall, I called the office, you answered, and I decided that I would, um, pretend that I was someone from out of the area who was who was older and had a visiting grandson mm -hmm. who was fascinated with the stars and the moon. And I wanted to know if the uh, the Methow Conservatory had a telescope um, that, that that we could come and, and use while he was here. I think it was spring break or something. And uh, I managed to to keep from losing it as I was uh, pretending to be this caller to the main line. And you very kindly asked a couple questions and then put me on hold. And I was pretty sure that you were going to someone else in the office saying, what do I do when Jason is calling, <laughs> wasting my time with a call like this? <laughs> and, and instead, just a couple minutes later, you hop back on and were able to tell me about uh, a talk that was happening um, in the community that I claim to have been calling from, I think it was maybe Tenasket or, or wow. OMAC, where someone was giving a talk on, on the stars, I, I believe is what it was. And you were able to give me the time and the location <laughs> and assure me that it was all free. 
And so I hung up from that call very clearly. The joke was on me and I, and I felt pretty good that we had the, the right person in the job fielding calls like that here at the Conservancy. So you, uh, you passed that test and uh, um, yeah, that was, that was a fun one. I remember being slightly bummed when I found out that it was you on the other end of that because I was pretty proud of myself that I had found this event for this uh, theoretical grandchild to attend. Yeah, no, that was great. As I recall, it took a couple of years before you uh, you found out the truth on that one. <laughs> That's true. I think you felt bad too, and you did not uh, <laughs> spill the beans on that one until much later. Yeah, no, no, the joke was on me on that one for sure. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, the Conservancy has just had an incredible year this year. Um, we've moved into a new amazing building at 414 Riverside in downtown Winthrop. We've protected a couple important pieces of farmland, um, and we are in the process of gifting the former Wagner Ranch uh, to the Confederated Tribe of the Colville Reservation. Um, what is the secret sauce that allows the Conservancy to be successful year after year? Boy, I think the secret sauce in, in every example, uh, those you've cited and many others, is this community. Um, and it begins with the visionaries 26 or so years ago who, who thought there might be a place here in the valley for a land trust and an entity like ours and, a, and another group of folks who saw there might be a future for an education uh, organization here in the valley and and those two came together and those early founders of the the conservancy understood that that moving slow and building trust and building relationships and involving the community in the work of the organization was going to be key to that early success and I think they identified that secret sauce right out of the gates and and did the hard work to um, to get those early successes under the belt of the organization and lay a foundation that's that's been, um, you know, I feel very fortunate to have inherited this amazingly strong foundation and then to get to work with the team we have to, to expand that work and grow a bigger and bigger tent and invite more and more people in um, and to just help people understand uh, that that everyone who knows this valley has some appreciation or love for the land and, and the rivers here. And that that's, that's a common place from which we can grow and build that trust and, and the relationships to go forward. And that's really at the heart of, of every big win that the Conservancy has, has had the honor of being a part of. Yeah, it sounds so basic, but it, it really is true. Yeah, amazing. Um, let's see. What uh, are you hoping to see in the future for the Methow Conservancy? Oh boy, um, you know I think that that the organization just always uh, takes the time to hear from the community, to engage the community, to really listen to to the wisdom that is this community, because I think everyone here is thinking about the future in in different and important ways. And so, uh, you know, my, my hope would be that the tent just gets larger and larger and that more people feel like they have a comfortable seat um, within it and know that they can come and participate with the organization and be part of conversations, even really difficult conversations where maybe we don't, we don't agree on certain aspects of issues, but, but they know that the Conservancy is a convener of conversations where they're comfortable and feel invited to come and and participate in shaping the future of the place uh, in the way that, that they hope it will evolve. And my 16 years here has, has definitely shown me that there's so much more that unites us um, here in this valley and frankly, I think across the American West than, than what divides us. And if we just turn the television off and, and go to that meeting at the Grange or participate in a public process over in Okanagan County. Um, if we take the time to introduce ourselves to who's sitting next to us and, and connecting with them in a human way, 
we have so much in common and what we hope for the landscape of the valley is is quite similar and and i hope and believe that the methow conservancy will will be a hub that continues to find ways to bring people together and help them realize that reality um, long into the future, whatever the threats or opportunities are here. Yeah, I think during the pandemic, um, we really got a taste for how much of a hub the Conservancy is for those conversations. Um, and it's definitely something that I know we want to continue um, to foster in this community as we move forward. So I also hope to see, you know, that vision come to reality. Yeah, I, I, am, I am confident that it will because it's been at the heart of what this organization has done for so many years. And, and I know it will continue into the future. Yeah. So you are staying uh, in the Valley physically, uh, but you are going to work uh, on national conservation and affordable housing issues as a trustee for the Campion Foundation. Um, what is one thing that you are looking forward to about working at a bigger scale? Yeah, you know, I have always been fascinated by this intersection of uh, the natural environment and environmental issues and communities and community issues. Mm -hmm. And that really my, my uh, educational work and my first job out of school um, was at the, the city of Shelton and South Puget Sound coming out of the, the spotted owl era. And in just a lot of, a lot of tensions um, and a lot of opportunities at that intersection. And that's been a common theme for me um, through my career to date, um, sort of existing in that space, that intersection, mm -hmm. and to have the opportunity to, to go work on conserving some of the largest and arguably most important um, pieces of public land that we have in our country, um, to achieve conservation goals there, working with communities for whom that's their homeland, Mm -hmm. And then balancing that with the really raw, real issues like homelessness um, and, and housing security in our built communities. Um, having the opportunity to work in both areas, I think, is really important because to me, they're both habitat in, in a way. And uh, a healthy ecosystem has, uh, you know, the right habitat, the right place for everyone. And I think a, a healthy community does as well. And so I'm, I'm really excited to get to work with, you know, a broad range of folks who are experts in these areas and to continue to learn how we can both protect the important wild places um, that exist um, or those places that provide important natural function um, and mitigation for things like climate change and how we can also really think about what we need to be doing in our communities from a a policy or an investment standpoint to make sure that everyone has a healthy place, uh, whether it's here in the Methow or you know, in Wenatchee or in downtown Seattle. So uh, just a lot of opportunity to keep learning and, and hopefully build relationships and bring all the tools that I've learned through my 16 years here just to a, a different venue, um, but, but in my mind doing really similar work going forward. So I'm really excited to, to have the opportunity to, to build on everything that I've gotten to do here. Yeah, interesting insight. We are gonna miss you here at the Conservancy, uh, but we are so excited uh, to see the impact that you are gonna have on the land and in communities across the West. Um, and you are always welcome to take any phone call on our lawn here at the Conservancy. Uh, <laughs> and we really do wish you the best of luck. Uh, well, thank you, Daniel. And, uh, you know, not, none of the successes that I've been a part of here at the Conservancy would be possible without the incredible staff teams I've had the honor of working with and the board members and, and advisors who've been a part of, you know, those many projects. And I can guarantee you that I will be uh, swinging by the Little Dipper and grabbing one of those cookies and you'll find me out in the lawn probably many times for, uh, for years to come here. So, Thank, thanks for the opportunity to talk today and, uh, and best wishes to you and your new position and everything that's ahead as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Jason. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye.